Welcome to a mini lecture about sums. Uh, this is going to tell you about the not sum and the relevant material is uh, what you can find in definition 127 up to and including definition 130 and everything in between. So here's the definition. Let J and K be oriented knots and they, abs they absolutely have to be oriented. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how to form the sum written j hash k. How can I add these two dots together? Well, I start by first adjusting j and k so that they can be separated by a plane. What's going on here? Well, remember that j and k are subsets of R3. And I want to start, in my head, I want to start by taking their union. And then I'm going to do something once I've taken the union. Well. Taking the union, this could go badly wrong, because J and K might intersect. There's no guarantee that that doesn't happen already. And then, so what do I do? I, I adjust J and K just a little bit so that they don't intersect. Well, then if I take the union, something could still go wrong, which is that after I've taken the union, they might still be linked together. So I have to make sure that that doesn't happen. And the way I do it is by pushing them far apart at first, so that they can be separated by a plane. That means that when I take the union, um, they won't be linked in any way. So I make sure that they can be separated by a plane, and then I replace a region that looks like this one on the left here with a region that looks like this one on the right. So what I do is I look for a place where uh, J and K pass each other by, close by, with J going one way and K going the other way. And then what I do is I replace that with the following little bridge where I travel down K across, sorry, I travel down J across to K, around K, back across to J, and then around J. So I, I find a place where J and K pass each other by, and then I replace it with this bridge. So here's an example. The question is, form the sum of these two knots J and K. Well, I look at the definition and I see that I don't have to do any adjustments. That's because J and K are definitely separated by a plane. It's the plane that crosses the, uh, the plane of the video in this vertical line here. So that's good. They're separated in the right way. And now can I find one of these regions that I needed? Well, first of all, let me follow the orientations around and so I can draw the orientation in here and let me follow the orientation of K around I can draw it in there. So now can you see that I can find this region where J and K pass each other by going in the opposite directions. And then whoops. I can form the sum by replacing what I had originally. Oh dear, let's try again. With the little bridge. So let's get the orientations in like that. And now I formed the sum. So let me do that again uh, without the red circle in the way. I see that J and K pass each other by in opposite directions, so I erase, I join up and I draw back in the orientation. And then this good way to see what's going on is which is that this orientation here on this side of the bridge is compatible with the orientation on the right, yes, and it's compatible with the orientation on the left. And in fact, if I find a region like this, then there's only one way to join them together that's compatible with the orientations, and it's the one I used. So here is the knot sum J sum K. Now, here we have some algebraic properties of the knot sum. Well, actually, the first bullet point is not an algebraic one. It's um, it's a theoretical one. 
which is that you should have had alarm bells ringing during the first part of this mini lecture when I was telling you how to form the sum because I made lots and lots of different choices when I formed the sum. First I had to move the knots apart and separate them, then I had to choose a region, then I had to join it together. Well, different choices could have possibly led to different sums. Well, they don't. So different choices lead to equivalent sums. That's explained in detail in the notes um, and you should probably go and uh, have a careful read of that yourselves. However, you cannot change the choice of orientation. You cannot change the orientations. If you did, then bad things might happen. You might end up finding different sums if you change the orientations of the J and K that you're summing together. Now, here are the algebraic properties. First, associativity. It says that if I take three knots, I, J, and K, then I can sum them together in three ways. One, I could first sum J and K, and then add that to I, or I could first sum I and J, and then add that to K. And those two things are equivalent. Next, we have commutativity. If I take J and K and sum them together, that's equivalent to taking J and, uh, K and J and summing them together. Next, perhaps more interesting, there is a unit. If I take the sum of K and the unknot, then the result is equivalent to K again. In other words, the unknot is like an identity element for the knot sum. And um, I won't draw the example, but you should. Um, have a go at taking the sum of your favourite knot k with the unknot and see what you get. Check that you get k back again. Now here's a definition. k is prime if k is not equivalent to the unknot and it's not equivalent to anything of the form k1 sum k2 with k1 and k2 themselves non-trivial. This is like saying that a number is prime if it's not equal to 1 and it's not e equal to a product of two numbers that are not equal to 1. So this is a bit like the definition of prime number. And uh, we're going to see um, we're going to see examples of prime knots later on in the course um, and prime knots are going to be useful to us because um, those are the ones we list in the knot table. Now, let's end the mini lecture with an example, slightly more problem-based example. Express the following oriented knot as a sum. And here is the oriented knot in question. So try and express this knot as the sum of two other knots. With justification, of course. OK, so I suggest you pause the video and have a go now. I'll come back in just a second with some hints. So, why is this question difficult? Or at least, why is it not immediately simple? Well, it's because this picture here doesn't look like the sums we were drawing before. It doesn't look like two knots side by side joined together by this bridge. However, it's pretty easy to see that something is going on, right? Because uh, most of the knot, whoops, most of the knot looks like our friend the figure 8. But with something bizarre going on in this little region here. So maybe this knot on the left is the sum of the figure 8 with something else. And that's in fact what happens. And how do I get there? Well here's the first step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this strange region, the problematic bit, and I'm going to move it up. I'm going to slide it underneath this crossing until it lives up here at the top. So let me try and do that. So let's start by making space for it up here. Let me try and copy paste it up there, very good. 
and then I should fix everything back up again. So there we are. I've taken, let me put the orientation back in, I've taken this little region here and I've slid it underneath the crossing until it lives up here. So now can you see it's a not sum? Pause the video, have another think, and again I'll come back. Okay, so here is um, the next step on the road to proving that this is a sum. Because the thing on the right here still doesn't look like two knots side by side joined together by a bridge. So what I'm going to do is make them look very clearly that way. And the way I'll do it is by taking this part here and dragging it out to the left. So let me drag it out to the left. And let me, for good measure, put the orientations on there. Is this the right one? Yes, it is. OK. So now this is clearly equivalent to the not sum. It's equivalent to the sum. of these two knots. This one on the right and this one on the left. Best get the orientations correct. There we go. So it is equivalent to the sum of these two things. And that's the end of the example, and that's the end of the mini-lecture.